Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. I'm a product manager on the LogMeIn Care support platform, and today I'll be walking you through the basic steps of installing LogMeIn Pro and or Central on a work computer, uh, setting up that computer so it can be accessed from home, and then finally accessing that computer from a home office location. Uh, because most companies have varying degrees of what an employee is allowed to do on their work computer, I'll be walking through this process starting with a few assumptions. If at any time something doesn't appear to you, or you receive an error, I will be addressing the most common of these issues and how to resolve them at the end of the video. Here are a few of my assumptions as I get started. Number one, you're an admin on your work computer. This is important for two reasons. So A, you will need the ability to install the LogMeIn software on your work computer. Um, some companies prevent users from installing software themselves, in which case you will need someone in IT with proper permissions to help you install the software. Uh, and then B, you will also need an admin to grant you permission to remote control your computer. If you're an admin, you'll have this capability inherently. If not, you will need to contact someone in IT to grant you permission to remote control your work computer. The second assumption is that you or someone uh, has physical access to your work computer to install the software. Uh, with offices closing in response to the COVID-19, this is vital if you haven't used LogMeIn Pro or Central in the past. So if this is your first time using the product, please make sure uh, that there is someone available at your work computer if you're not there uh, directly. And then assumption number three is that you have four key pieces of information to start a remote control session. This includes your LogMeIn ID or email, your LogMeIn password, your username of your work computer, and the password of your work computer. We'll talk a little bit more about these in just a few moments. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. For simplicity's sake, I took out a trial of LogMeIn Pro, which I'm going to use as the walkthrough for the installation process. For those of you who have LogMeIn Central, you will likely see additional options on the far left of the screen, but the process of adding a computer is identical. So step number one, installing LogMeIn on your work computer. The computer I'm sitting at right now, which I am using to create this video, this is my work computer. I will refer to this as my work computer in setting up a work from home environment. So here on my work computer, I'm going to install LogMeIn. First, I'm going to open up the web and navigate to logmein.com, where I'll start by logging in to my new account. Remember I mentioned a moment ago about four bits of information that you need for this to work? Well, if you can sign in, then you have the first two pieces of information right here. Your email is the LogMeIn ID, and your password is your LogMeIn password. If you're like me, you likely just set this up when you started a trial or purchased a subscription. Once I'm logged in, I land here on my computers page. As I haven't added any computers yet, this page will appear empty. If I navigate to the top, I see the option to add the computer. I have two options. I can add this computer or I can add a different computer. I'm gonna click add this computer as I'm sitting at my work computer right now. You'll notice that as I click Download Installer, the installer comes down here in the form of an MSI file. If I double click on that, it's going to prep the installation process. First, which comes up is the license agreement. So I'll select that I agree to those terms and continue. Next, it will show my LogMeIn ID. So I am the account holder. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue here. And I'm gonna stay with a typical uh, recommended installation. We don't re really need to do anything custom uh, here because we're just gonna be accessing the computer. I'm gonna call this computer, uh, this is the default computer name, Saint Centcom. I'm gonna call it that uh, and I'll just keep going, but I could of course change that name here if I'd like. Program files is fine. And now I start the installation process. Something I'd like to call out, here's your third piece of information. So this is my full name here. Um, I'm gonna blank this out for the video, but ultimately this is going to be the username I'm going to need um, when I wanna access this computer in the future. So here I'm getting a, a user access control. I wanna say yes to allow to make changes. And after a few seconds, it will install and I should get a success message here in just a moment.
Okay, so now I have my installation successful screen has just popped up, which is excellent. It does retain, again, my, my username here, which I will need a little bit later, and of course my password for this computer, which I just know by heart. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish, and two boxes are going to likely show up. Perfect. So here we can see the log me in control panel, which is ultimately the software that enables the remote control process to happen. Um, so here I can see my computer as I named it. I can see it's currently accessible. So the log me in software is actually running on this machine and it will enable me to access this machine from another location. Um, if you are unsure or don't see this screen here, usually by default, the log me in icon, which is blue with white circles in it, will show up in your uh, little area down here in your in your system tray. Um, so go ahead and just check for that if you don't see it. Um, but ultimately, double-clicking this will bring up this uh, log me in control panel screen. I can close out of my setup wizard because I'm all finished with this. Um, and if I go back to my computers page, we're going to see now that CENTCOM has been added and it's been online for three minutes. So at this point, I am now ready to go home. I can go into my home office and I can connect to this computer from my home office. So now that I'm on my home computer, I can start remote controlling my work computer by logging in at logmein.com. Once I sign in, I'm brought to the same page where I left off at work, with my CENTCOM computer listed here in my account. To start a remote control session, I'm going to simply click on the blue or green computer icon or its name. I'm immediately brought to another login screen where I need to enter my work computer credentials. These are the same credentials that were displayed during the installation process, which I blurred on the screen earlier. I enter the password for my work computer, and just like I'm sitting at it, I'm taken to the verification screen. I'm now officially connected to the back end of my work computer. You'll notice the LogMeIn client has downloaded as a zip at the bottom, or you may see another additional notification for running the LogMeIn client app in the browser. I'm going to go ahead and launch this to start the remote control session. After a quick connection dialog, I am able to access my computer at work just like I was sitting in front of it. When I'm finished, to end the remote session, simply click the X in the top right corner of the window, or if you're in full screen, the black options menu along the top of the screen. If prompted, select End Session. You're brought back to the screen we saw immediately prior to our remote control session. I recommend as a best practice to click disconnect on this screen and return to the home page before you close your browser window. At this point, I'm now going to discuss a few common error messages that you may see and how you can fix them. Number one, 1326. A 1326 or 1326 error is the most common and it simply means that the username and password that you are entering for your work computer are incorrect. It is a very common scenario to see a user enter their LogMeIn ID or email address here, their LogMeIn password, or a combination of both. Remember, you want to enter the username that appeared during the installation and the password for your work computer, just as if you were sitting at the machine in your office. This is why I emphasize the four bits of information at the beginning of the video, because if you enter the wrong credentials five times in a row, you will need to wait a half hour before you can try again. A good tip is to test your remote connection from another computer in your office if possible, so that you can gather these credentials if need be before you leave for the day. Number two, 4320 error. A 4320 or 4320 error or the operator has refused the request error, is the second most common error code and means that you are not an admin on your work computer. This will be more common for employees of larger organizations and requires someone with admin credentials, usually an IT department or the person who set up your computer, to grant you permission to remote control. Documentation on how admins can grant this permission is available below. The third common error that occurs is when you successfully install the host software, but no computer appears in the account. For example, if I was to install on CENTCOM, but that name never showed up in the account. This usually occurs if LogMeIn was already installed on your computer under a different account. 
When you selected to add your computer, the installer updated an existing version of LogMeIn on your machine. If this is the case, open the LogMeIn control panel from the system tray and navigate to the About tab. The subscriber is listed here and it should be your email address. If it is not, then your computer is already part of an existing account under the email listed. You'll want to contact your IT admin, most likely the individual at that email address, and they can extend you the ability to remote control on their existing license. Number four, I get all the way to the last step before I can remote control, and the connection message remains on verifying identity until it times out and doesn't connect. If this is the case, there may be a firewall blocking LogMeIn. An easy way to check this is to click on the Show Details, very small uh, text in the bottom right corner, and scroll down until you see the line Certificate Issued By, and then it will give a company name. If the company name is anything other than Global Sign, then there is likely a firewall blocking LogMeIn from connecting, and it must be allowed through or whitelisted. In a corporate environment, you will likely need someone in IT to do this, but instructions on whitelisting are found below. Number five, I get a sign on to option when I go to enter my work computer username and password. What does this mean? This means your computer at work is on a domain and you need to select that domain from the drop down to proceed. You'll want to speak with someone in IT if you are unfamiliar with your company's domain. These are five of the most common questions or errors that we see and should help you if you get stuck. However, if you're still having trouble, try navigating to support.logmeinink.com forward slash pro, where you can find user guides, additional video content, and in-depth documentation.